fill up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. We're invited to help Jesus save the world. And even when we're suffering because we've sinned, we can still say, Jesus, I join you on this cross right now. You're not going to die alone. And we help him save the world. <coughs> That's how total and complete God's victory over sin and death is. That he can even use our sin to help him save the world. How much more than our sufferings in innocence, we can join him and help him save the world. This is total victory over suffering. This is total victory over death. And it's ours because he gave it to us. We have a God of extraordinary love. A God of extraordinary power. He has conquered it all. And he makes his victory our victory. When we suffer, cry out. Cry out to God. Give him that pain. Ask him for the grace to believe and to live what you believe, not what you feel. Understand, he is right with you in that moment of fear, in that moment of sorrow, in that moment of confusion. He's not ashamed of you. He's next to you. He's suffering with you at that moment. He proved it by the Incarnation. He proved how far he'll go to ransom a slave God sent his son. We can ask Mary for help and prayers during those times. We can ask her to stand with us at our cross and, and, and see and excuse me, act out of what we know and believe and why we know and believe it, because God said it and he has proven so dependable. He has proven that his word is true. Are we broken? He's broken with us. Are we rejected? The people, do people despise us not for our evil, but for our good? He was despised and rejected. Do we weep? Is our grief a familiar spirit, a horribly familiar friend that trails us Wherever we go, our scripture says he was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. Do people misunderstand us? Turn away from us. Talk about us. It says in scripture that they hid their faces from him and treated him as an outcast or a leper. Is our love betrayed? Our tenderest relationships broken? He too loved and was betrayed by the ones who he loved. It says in the Gospel of John that he came into the world for his own, but his own rejected him. All of this, God sits with us. And we can choose to believe and live out of faith that he suffers with us. And you know how his suffering ended, right? It ended in resurrection and so will ours. So will ours. We can believe that because God said it. One of the things that I'll invite us to do is pray every day for the gift of hope. And pray every day that whatever our suffering or our pain or our sorrow, he's with us. And we can even pray that God show us why it's happening. Although understand, that might not happen until the kingdom of heaven. I spent three months in Poland. And while I was there, I got tour, a tour of one of these magnificent castles. And they had on the wall these tapestries hanging, and they told these beautiful stories. You've seen these kinds of tapestries. It's extraordinary. And in the next room over was the room where they were repairing the old tapestries. And you know, what I saw was the front of the tapestries, this beautiful story, incredible, intricate, amazing work, years and years for people to complete. But when you get into the room where they're repairing them, you see the other side of the room, and it's a mess. Crisscross colors, a mishmash of nonsense, it makes no sense when you look at that tapestry from behind. 
And in the same way, right now, that's our view of life. If we see this mishmash of pain and of sorrow, moments of joy, and all of that, and it seems to make no sense. Why is she suffering, Lord? She's done everything right. Why am I suffering? I'm just trying to do the right thing. God, what's going on? I tell you, when we see him face to face, he'll flip that tapestry over and it will take our breath away. We may even see that the suffering that so confounded us that it wasn't about us. It was about someone else who saw us holding on to our faith in the darkest hour and that gave them the strength to do the same thing. We won't know all of it until heaven. And in that moment, I think we're going to laugh with God for the rest of eternity at how beautiful a picture he made. But while we're here, it looks like a mess. Do we love him? Do we trust him? Do we trust that he loves us? If so, whether he caused it or whether he allowed it doesn't even matter. He'll bring victory. For he is bringing victory. I think my, my sister, one of them, she's a uh, neonatal intensive care doc. And I've seen like the pictures of these tiny, tiny little babies when they're born. It's an extraordinary thing. But I thought of that child in the womb, and this might be a stretch, but this is what hit me one time when I was in a very, very dark situation, praying to God, what the heck is going on? You know, I kept saying to God, this was my prayer, really? Really? You know, every once in a while I'd just look up to heaven and go, seriously, Lord? You know. And all of a sudden, uh, my sister, she had a, what do you call those? Where they um, see the baby inside the womb. Ultrasound, sorry. Celibacy, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> word pacifier, I can never uh, She had an ultrasound picture, and I stared at that, and all of a sudden it hit me, that little squeaker in the womb, right? Warm, happy, all needs are taken care of, everything's great. And if he could think, if he could think like we think, don't you suppose the little guy would wonder, what are these things for, right? Those are legs, those are feet, you're going to need them. You'll need him now. You'll need him. What about his hands? Why, why, why do he have hands, you might wonder? Why do I have a mouth? All of it. Everything about him he might look at and think, I don't need these things. I've got everything I need. But once he's born and can see the world and start to experience it like you and me, well, then it makes a lot of sense. I needed these so I could move around. I needed my mouth so I can eat. I needed the hands so I can pick things up and throw them. <laughs> Imagine some of our suffering at least. It's going to be like that. Where we say, God, why did this happen to me? And in heaven, we see why we needed that. If you ever read the book of Tobit, it's worth your, all of them are worth your time. But Read the book of Tobit if you get a chance. It's an extraordinary story in our scripture. Of a, it's a long story, but you have two people in pain who don't know each other, and they're far away, and slowly God brings them together. And as the young man is journeying toward the woman who will eventually become his wife, strange stuff happens to him. A fish, while he's washing in the river, so the fish came up and tried to swallow his foot. And he caught the fish, and his guide, who was secretly an angel, told him to keep that part and that part of the fish, and he did. And later, when he met the woman who was to become his wife, she needed all of those things. It, 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 this is how our God thinks. This is how our God works. You and I see all these little boundaries of our lives, and we don't understand how much and how often we intersect with others. I was blessed to go to seminary with two guys from China. Roman Catholicism is illegal in China, and you aren't treated with mercy. One of the two has already been martyred. When we were saying goodbye at the airport, five years of seminary together, and we were saying goodbye at the airport, and in a very manly way, I was crying. <laughs> and uh, we were all crying and hugging on him. And I said to him, I said, Jin Dave, I'll see you in heaven. And 
he said this to me, I'll never forget. He said, Joseph, I'll see you at the next Eucharist. And the next time I was at Mass, and the priest held up the post, I wasn't a priest yet, but he held it up and it struck me. That's not just an imitation of Jesus at the Last Supper. That's the one. In every Mass, when we receive him, we're receiving the same Eucharist that every faithful Catholic has through all time and history. We are bound by this. And because of that, we're connected in a way we can't understand yet. And maybe our suffering is for someone in China. Maybe our suffering is for someone in South America. Who knows? But wouldn't you carry a cross for your brother? Won't you carry a cross for your sister? We hold these things. And we see that our life has eternal significance. All of it. We're all connected because of the wonder of the Eucharist. Our God offering himself to us, binding us together. Of course we're going to hurt for each other. Of course we're going to carry for a brother that we don't know now, but we will in heaven. We'll carry that bag for him. We'll carry that box for her. In our suffering is this reminder that our lives are not just about us. Our lives are about Jesus, who binds and unites us to all, all believers, past and present. G.K. Chesterton calls it the, the democracy of the dead, that we forget that the church in God's mind is not divided between those who are uh, those who have gone before us in death and those who are alive now and those who are to come, it's all together in that beautiful mind of our God. Maybe our suffering is for someone else. I told you about my best friend in the world who's a priest as well and how he was ordained three years behind me, so I'm a better priest. <laughs> he fell away from the Lord for a long time. A lot of suffering and darkness in his life. And I'll be honest, some level, I, I didn't blame him as a kid. I got it. He was hurt so bad. And in the midst of it, we lost contact for a few years. And when he called me back, when we finally reconnected in 1993, he had just walked out of a funeral. And it was a guy we worked with that he stayed friends with, and I did, and he died very suddenly, very unexpectedly. And there's my buddy sitting in church for the first time in years. He saw the faith of his friend's family, and he went back to church. And he's a priest now. Every time I see that family, that's all I can think of. It's such sorrow for what they went through. But I wonder if they know how many lives that beautiful priest has changed. And it all happened because the only thing that would get him into a church at that stage at that moment, God spoke to his heart and changed him. When I uh, did my pilgrimage to uh, Jerusalem the first time, we got to go into the Holy Sepulchre. And if you've ever been there, this is the place where it's a huge church with a lot of churches inside it. Uh, churches for where Jesus died, a church for where Jesus rose. When we got there, uh, I asked if, if we could stay the night uh, there, and we did. And I'm wandering around, and I got down to this one tunnel, and they killed all the lights. And I was in complete darkness. And I didn't know exactly how to get back. And so I put my hands, it was a tunnel, and I put my hands on the wall, and I felt something. It wasn't squishy, thank God. <laughs> and I kind of felt my way along, and I kept following it, but I could feel every time my hands were hitting something on the wall. I walked about 100 feet that way, terrified. Well, very manly way, I was terrified. <laughs> it's okay, you know. Um, the lights came back on, and I looked, and this tunnel all around me, filled with 
crosses that people had carved, little crosses, really crude ones. They just carved in the stone wall. And what I found out was that was the main entrance for pilgrims from Europe for about 1,300 years. For 1,300 years, people walked from France, and Germany, and Russia, and Greece, and all these different places. They walked and they walked, and they got to Jerusalem to see where Jesus was laid. And they carved their little crosses in the wall. And I got to touch those crosses. And that night when I prayed, I walked into the place where they had the stone where Jesus laid, and I, I put my hand on it. And I was overwhelmed with the sense of, this is where everything changed. This is where all of our hope came from. It happened right here. He conquered death. I went out to church and sat down to kind of think about it. And this voice in my heart just said, make your mark. Make your mark. Carve that cross in the wall. When we live inside out, that's what we're doing. We're making our mark. And it's really Jesus' mark, which is the best thing we can do. When you're suffering, when you're filled with joy, when you feel like you can't take one more step, or when you feel like nothing can stop you, and all the emotions in between, make your mark. Let your suffering, know that your suffering has eternal consequences. Know that your joy has eternal repercussions all through time and history. Jesus connected himself to you in a way that you and I could never break. And so everything has relevance. Everything. We inform our emotion of the truth. God is with me. He will never abandon me. He's carved his name on the palm of He's carved my name on the palm of his hands. I am his. And then we might have a deeper sense of what the Apostle Paul wrote when he said, because of the love of Christ, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors because of him who loves us. When you know you're loved, you can endure any need. You're loved. You're loved perfectly at every moment. And so we will be faithful. We will live inside out. We will join our sufferings to Jesus. We will help him save the world. This is what we'll do. When we hurt, we'll let him know. Because each tear, each cry, everyone is an invitation to him to immediately come in and begin the work of healing. We can reach out in our pain. Find other people's pain and pray for that. Find other people's wounds and dress those wounds. This is what Jesus did in his moment of suffering and darkness. When we do this, when we live inside out, we'll find that day by day our hearts are strengthened, our souls are fortified, and we are able to live the life that God keeps telling us we can do. God believes that you and I can become saints, not spiritual survivors. That's for wins. He believes we can be saints. So let's get busy about it. Praying each day, loving God and each other with all our hearts and minds, suffering with him in our suffering and recognizing that every action, no matter how small or how grand, has eternal consequence because we are joined in Christ. When we do this, we live inside out. We will make our mark, and it will change the world forever. Amen? Amen. Amen.